Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Tio from the Department of Surgery, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Sitting next to me is Dr. Yip, and we'll be talking about our paper on the feasibility of perioral cholecystoscopy and advanced gallbladder interventions after U.S. gutter gallbladder stenting. This is a paper recently published in GIE. This was a retrospective review performed in our department concerning patients who underwent cholecystoscopy after U.S. guided gallbladder drainage. All of these patients suffered from acute cholecystitis with U.S. guided drainage performed. A total of 29 cholecystoscopy was performed during these periods, and among these, 27, a total of 93.1% was successful. Among these patients, we had performed magnifying endoscopy in 10 of them, confocal endomicroscopy in US in one of them, and also endocytoscopy in another one of the patients. Among these patients, 56% of them had spontaneous stone passage, but 44% of them had residual stones and required more, uh, further gallbladder intervention in order to remove these gallstones. So the overall stone clearance rate was 88% after a mean number of 1.25 sessions of cholecystoscopy. This study actually shows that peroral cholecystoscopy is not feasible as well as safe and also advanced gallbladder intervention is possible in these patients. So uh, Dr. Thiel, may I ask you uh, what do you think is the impact of the current study? I think the gallbladder is traditionally an organ that is off limits to the endoscope. Uh, in previous reports of uh, peroral cholecystoscope, most of the uh, examinations were performed via a transistic route. The endoscope that is used is usually a very small caliber endoscope, and as a result, the images are often very poor, and also uh, advanced uh, gallbladder interventions or even biopsies is, is not possible. So with the advent of um, lumen opposing stent, uh, nowadays we could perform a U.S. guided gallbladder stenting. Um, the lumen opposing stent that were used mostly in this study were 50 millimeters, meaning a large caliber endoscope could be introduced through the uh, stent, and the stent actually acts as a portal to access for us to access the gallbladder. As a result, we can have very high definition um, uh, images uh, of the gallbladder as well as uh, defining the normal gallbladder mucosa or, or even cancerous gallbladder mucosa. And uh, at the same time, uh, while having a very high definition uh, diagnostic uh, examination of gallbladder, uh, advanced intervention was also, were also possible. Uh, we performed a number of uh, advanced interventions, including uh, uh, stone retrieval, uh, ear examinations, um, and um, these were all performed successfully and uh, most of the patients that received a uh, cholecystoscope were stone free at the end of the um, procedure and um, I think this opens up very exciting possibilities for future uh, gallbladder uh, imaging as well as uh, interventions. So Dr. Teo, before performing cholecystoscopy is there any preparation that you need to do for the patients? And did you encounter any difficulties when doing these procedures? So these patients are actually all suffer from acute cholecystitis and they are not surgical candidates. So they receive a U.S. cytogobular drainage as a method for treating their acute cholecystitis. And as per our protocol, a follow-up cholecystoscopy is usually performed one to three months after the U.S. cytogobular drainage. So prior to the procedure, the patient is usually fasted as, uh, as per any upper endoscopy, usually six hours uh, before the procedure. Um, the procedure would be performed uh, with prophylactic antibiotics under CO2 insufflation. A high definition uh, upper end, uh, gastroscope would be used and it will be inserted orally. The endoscope would pass through the esophagus, the stomach and into, to, into the duodenum. Uh, since most of our stents were inserted, inserted via duodenum, the endoscope uh, passage into the duodenum will identify the stents in these uh, areas. And once the stent is identified, then the negotiation of the endoscope through the stent into your gallbladder is actually not difficult. So at the initial part of the study, our aim was to define what a normal gallbladder mucosa looked like. 
So uh, initially we were trying to get our bearings in the uh, in the get in the gallbladder, trying to see what uh, the normal gallbladder mucosa looks like, and afterwards we try to define the pathology pathological areas. For example, in patients with very severely inflamed gallbladder, we would see sometimes uh, some um, scarring or even strictures or even hourglass appearance of the gallbladder. Um, in terms of interventions, most of the interventions performed were a lipotripsy or gallbladder gallstone removal. Majority of patients, uh, these gallstones actually pass out spontaneously. Um, in a few patients, the stones were too big to pass out from the uh, luminal forcing stent. As a result, we need to perform uh, advanced uh, lipotripsy. For example, with the use of basket lip mechanical lipotripsy or even uh, laser lipotripsy. So um, after lip lipotripsy, most of the stones could be removed uh, through the sand quite easily. And um, uh, the patients uh, usually um, uh, respond quite well to the procedure. Uh, it will perform a cholecystogram. Um, uh, it is just like a, any um, uh, cho cholangioscopy or chole cholangiographic interventions. So there's a chance of a causing a flare of sepsis in the biliary tract. So we need to make sure that um, the patients receive antibiotics and also try to avoid uh, excessive uh, contrast injection through the um, cystic duct into the uh, biliary tree. So in terms of future of the gallbladder stenting, I think uh, this opens up exciting possibilities for gallbladder interventions and also imaging. Um, I think um, the use of ES gallbladder gallbladder stenting can act as a portal for um, all these uh, exciting procedures. And uh, we look forward to a day in which uh, we could also use the procedure to perform uh, gallbladder interventions even in symptomatic uh, gallbladder pathology.